So our next speaker is Professor Mal Joshi from Texas A&M University, and he will convince us that spelling is real magic. <laughs> Um, I want to thank Zvia, Tammy, and the organizing committee for inviting me to this conference. And as you can see, that my presentation is not relating to reading, nor on fluency, nor on brain function. But I will also uh, give you my summary in one sentence saying that English spelling, especially, is not really as irregular as it has been made to believe. And I want to thank uh, my collaborators in various aspects of the data collection. I should have uh, included uh, the Haskins Lab people, but I have not collaborated with them yet, but I have been greatly influenced for the past 30 years for the work that they have done as you will see from some of the references. Um, I'm going to talk broadly about the importance of spelling and some of the research we have conducted on assessment of spelling, intervention, and some of the spelling studies in different orthographies. Uh, most of these uh, studies have been published, and so if you want more information, you can contact me. So I'm going to broadly uh, give the overview of what we have done. And then I'll conclude my uh, presentation. Uh, spelling is really uh, a neglected area in both in terms of research and uh, instruction. Uh, I looked at the Social Science Citation Index for the past 10 years there were about 13,000 papers published on reading, about 6,000 papers on writing, and about 1,000 papers on spelling. So really, uh, researchers have not paid much attention to spelling. And spelling has also not received its due in instruction. Um, we asked uh, teachers, we gave some uh, misspellings, these were real uh, spelling errors from uh, uh, fourth grade students, and asked the teachers, um, let's see how you do this, okay? Uh, we gave on here, what are some of the remedial uh, instructions you would provide for these kind of spelling errors? And these are the correct uh, suggested uh, technique, but as you can see, majority of the classroom te teachers selected H has their uh, preferred answer, saying that I just ask the students to close their eyes and think of the correct spelling. If you don't have the phonological and orthographic representation, no matter how long you close your eyes, the spelling, correct spelling ain't coming. And the second one was the D has student trace and copy words five times. And again, uh, just repeating that may not help. Uh, it's, it was not like this long time ago in the United States. Actually, the early books, the original books, were uh, by Noah Webster and when he developed the first books, real American, I am using the term American to include United States. I know <laughs> Canada is also in America. But the first was, the title of his first book for reading was called the American Spelling Book. 
North American Reading Group. And as he said so fluently, spelling is the foundation of reading and the greatest ornament of writing. But people have made fun of English spelling. Like as you can see from one of our presidents, former presidents, it's a damn poor mind indeed, which can't think of at least two ways to spell any word. And Bernard Shaw said, English can't be spelled. And there is a whole book about English spelling roadblock to reading, saying that English spelling is chaotic and indefensible, with the worst orthography of all those that have pretensions to being alphabetic. And so people have suggested that English spelling system can be reformed to bring it in line with the idea of one-to-one -one mapping. And so, Noah Webster tried, he was successful in some, but not in all. And here is the recent uh, news bulletin. And uh, Joanna, you want to read this? The European Union commissioners have announced that agreement has been reached to adopt English as a preferred language for European communication rather than German, which, has, which was the other possibility. As part of the negotiations, the British government conceded that English spelling had some room for improvement and has accepted a five-year phased plan for what will be known as a Euro-English, Euro for short. In the first year, S will be used instead of a soft C. Certainly, civil servants will receive this news with joy. <laughs> also, the hard C will be replaced with K. Not only will this clear up confusion, but typewriters can have one less letter. There will be growing public enthusiasm in the second year when the troublesome PH will be replaced by the F. This will make words like photograph 20% shorter. Don't keep on going. In the third year, uh, public acceptance of the spelling is expected to reach the stage where more complicated changes are possible. Governments will encourage the removal of double letters, which have always been a deterrent to accurate spelling. <laughs> also, all will agree that the horrible mess of silent ease, the language, is disgraceful. <laughs> they will go. They would go. By the fourth year, people will be receptive, <laughs> receptive <laughs> to steps such as replacing uh, TH by Z and W by V. <laughs> there is a fifth year uh, the unnecessary O can be dropped from birds containing O, and similar changes would, of course, be applied to other combinations of letters. After this fifth year, we will have a really sensible written style. There will be no more troubles or difficulties, and everyone will find it easy to understand each other. Uh, the dream will finally come true. Uh, we will all have to relearn spelling. <laughs> but uh, we are sure you will like this. So yes, you can see. Uh, English spelling, even if it is possible to make it regular, it's not going to work. Um, I think, uh, as I mentioned earlier, spelling has been a neglected area. And why should we study spelling? Uh, this is from the Haskins group. As Shank Weiler uh, and the group said, even though spelling is not considered a component of reading, it really provides a valuable indicator of the level of orthographic skill which all literacy activities ultimately uh, depend. And word recognition and all subsequent higher level processes that take place in reading are constrained by the ability to fluently transport print into language. And there is a high degree of relationship between reading and spelling. And uh, as Linnea Eri has mentioned, reading can be done through partial cues. If you know S and T and P, and you know that it will be either stop or uh, stab. Whereas when you have to spell, you have to have all the four letters and all the four letters in the correct order. So very similar to decoding for good comprehension, the ability to spell well is also important to be a 
good writer because if a person has to think and spell, uh, think of every letter to spell, either the person will select easy words like good, I know how to spell good, so my walking was good, my food was good, and uh, the day was good, instead of saying the food was scrumptious and the walking was invigorating. So why think of those as spelling? So it really uh, does not help in writing well. And Berninger's group and Files group have shown that all the writing skills, spelling was the most stable, and the individual differences in spelling which had a unique variance in both at the word level reading, fluency, and text level comprehension. I think we have kind of uh, thought, at least in the United States, that let's teach reading and somehow it will go to spelling. But I think it should be the other way around, that we have to teach spelling so that it will improve fluency, comprehension, and word reading skills. And this is a recent paper, this is a longitudinal study, and they found that in these three grades, the spelling was the most stable measure and influence text comprehension and reading fluency. And these are some of the work by Steve Graham, and basically, you can, as you can see, that teaching spelling helps in various aspects of literacy skills uh, spelling assessment, uh, uh, what we have observed is in American schools, I don't know how it is done in Israel, but students are given a list of words to uh, learn by memory on Friday, and they come to school on Friday, and they're given a spelling test on those words, and they are scored right or wrong. Either you get a zero or one. But as you can see, here are the spelling of two uh, fourth graders, and if in the American schools right now, both of them are given zero points, <coughs> and they are given the same remedial uh, technique. But as you can see, Natasha, she has a better understanding, orthographic representation of the target words com compared to Chris. They do not need the same kind of instruction. And so we continue this. This is the uh, different way of scoring depending on the phonological errors or the phonetic errors or the morphological errors. So we administered this uh, test of written spelling for 89 participants and divided them into three groups as poor spellers, average spellers, and good spellers. Uh, what you found was poor spellers made more of phonological and phonetic errors and less of the orthographic and morphological errors, whereas the good spellers, they made more morphological or etymological errors. So they need different type of instruction. And um, so, yeah, basically I've uh, mentioned that. And in uh, dialect and spelling, the spoken language also influences spelling, and this is the work by Treeman, and what she found was based on the US population and the British population, because of the accent, even though the language is the same, because of the accent differences, the British and uh, uh, US children made different kinds of errors. Um, like uh, US children, when they pronounce the rhotic R, you can see the R, whereas the British children, you did not see the rhotic R. These were six to seven year old uh, children. And this also affects others, as seen by uh, the performance of British uh, University. Students. So we uh, want to look at, in the United States, the aspect of accent and spelling, and this is a, a Scarborough, again, the Haskins group. They have mentioned that probably the low performance of African-American children may be influenced by their spoken language, because there's a difference between the African-American uh, English and 
what they call the AAVE compared to academic writing in school writing, there is a difference. So we wanted to, this is the characteristics of uh, African American uh, English, and they leave out the consonants at the end or the G at the end. And we selected an inner city school in Houston. The school was classified as academically unacceptable, and there were these were sixth grade students. And uh, during uh, <coughs> December, we trained the teachers on systematic, explicit instruction in spelling, and um, taught them for eight weeks, uh, three days a week, 25 minutes a, a week, and. Uh, these are some of the principles that we use in uh, teaching spelling. <clears throat> and as you can see, that the treatment group that received the eight-week intervention uh, improved in spelling. And even after eight weeks, they had still maintained the spelling. This is the control group. They did not show any difference in during the first eight weeks as the control group. And then when they were taught with the systematic explicit spelling instruction, there was an yeah, improvement. Okay, so uh, those are the assessment and intervention studies that we are uh, we're involved with. And we are also involved with the <coughs> role of orthography uh, in spelling English words, uh, uh, mostly with L1 and L2. Uh, this is a broad classification by Coulthard. Uh, writing systems can be classified into alphabetic, syllabic. Uh, they call logographic. I don't like the term logographic, so I've said morphosyllabic there. And uh, alphabetic, uh, it is Roman alphabet, Cyrillic alphabet. It's mainly like English, Spanish, and so on. And the syllabic, there is no phonemic representation like uh, Japanese kana, or there is the potential phonemic representation like most of the Indian scripts, East Asian Indian scripts, and the morphosyllabic, which is like kanji in Chinese. And this is too broad, and uh, Miko and uh, their group, they have classified into shallow and deep, and based on the syllable structure, yes, they have put English as deep and complex, whereas their language finishes it simple and shallow. So in the first study, we looked at the spelling of English words in different orthographic backgrounds, like US, Norway, which is an alphabetic language, India, which is an alphosyllabic language, and China, which is uh, uh, the morphosyllabic. These are the number of participants, and based, all of them had two years of formal instruction in English. And these are some of the words that we use. We made sure that the words appear in their books. They were aware of that. And here are the uh, results. We just looked at the right or wrong. Uh, we scored it that way. And if you look at that, whether the, how many words they got it right, as you can see that Norway uh, children got about nine, and Indian children got about 11 correct, and China children got about seven. So based on this, you can say that the orthography of first language really does not influence spelling uh, English words uh, because even these three groups with different orthographic background scored very similarly. There was no significant uh, difference. Then we looked at the phonetic elements, how many phonetic elements they got right. So here are the results. So as you can see, when we looked at the number of phonetic elements they got in these words, uh, there was a significant difference between Chinese and Norwegian and Indian. This was, this was not significant. So you can see that Chinese children put fewer phonetic elements in spelling English words compared to Norwegian and Indian children. So this could be interpreted as because of the Chinese children did not have the or they have difficulty uh, breaking the words at the phonetic uh, uh, level. And what was interesting was when we looked at the individual words, when Norwegian and Indian children did not know 
how to spell a word, they make some attempts at the, at the phonological, at the phonetic level, whereas Chinese children, they wrote re real words. They really did not put many, some of the uh, phonetic elements. So night, uh, nice, for the word night, they wrote night, nice, like, light, 99. And for the word word, they wrote work, worker, wall, what. You know, there is no uh, phonetic uh, representation <coughs> with real words. And then you can say that, we, well, you know, uh, our group, there was the age difference because they were not controlled for age. And so we looked at the study in Singapore, which has exposure to Chinese, Malay, and Tamil, and all of them had two years of exposure to English. And we gave them some words. These are from the Woodcock Johnson. And again, as you can see, if you look at the total number of words correct, just scoring right or wrong, Chinese children uh, perform better than Malay uh, speaking background and Tamil speaking background. Whereas when you look at the phonetic equivalent, again, Chinese speaking children perform poorly compared to Tamil and Malay, and that can be interpreted mainly because of they don't have access to, or it is difficult to have them the phonetic equivalent. And again, you can see the real world substitutions that Chinese children made more real world substitutions than Malay speaking and Tamil speaking uh, children. They mainly made it the phonetic errors. Uh, and as uh, um, Siegel had mentioned, morphological awareness plays a very important role in spelling in addition to phonological awareness. And so we have been looking at the role of phonological awareness, morphological awareness, and orthographic awareness in spelling English words. This is the study uh, in uh, Russian. And this is published. I can send you the copy. Basically, these are the tasks that we used. And what we found was English speaking participants, the total variance of uh, phonological awareness, morphological awareness, orthographic awareness contributed 63% at the fourth grade level, but phonology still played an important role in spelling <coughs> English words. Whereas in Russian, even though we got about 54% of the variance, phonology contributed only 1% in uh, Russian uh, spelling. These were all matched, uh, matched by Greg Renko. So in uh, Chinese, uh, again, Chinese is considered a morphosyllabic language. There are a lot of compound words. And English can be can considered more of morphophonemic. And there are a lot of inflectional and uh, derivational words. And so we did this study in China and compared with English-speaking children. And these are the tasks. What we found was 60% was of the variance in spelling of English words was explained by these three aspects, the phonological awareness, morphological awareness, and orthographic awareness. And morphological awareness made the lo uh, largest contribution. But for the English-speaking group, phonological awareness was less important, while orthographic awareness was more important compared to the American group uh, for the Chinese. And we have done a similar study in Arabic also, comparing morphological, uh, orthographic, and uh, whether the sounds are similar. Uh, this is the tasks. Uh, what we found was, naturally, when you don't have the sound in Arabic, uh, for instance, the t and the sound, uh, they made more errors. And when, in addition to that, there was also the errors were based on the place and manner of articulation, making the f uh, for the f sound. But compared to English and uh, Arabic uh, uh, students, there was no difference in when the sounds are available in both the languages. OK. So um, in conclusion, the spelling assessment, it should be based on a rubric as one, two, three, four, five, rather than right or wrong. And instruction in spelling helps in becoming better spellers, naturally, but it also makes one a better reader. <coughs> and the nature of orthography of uh, uh, the uh, first language uh, and the knowledge 
that the words can be broken down into smaller segments at the phonetic level uh, helps in spelling English words. And phonological awareness, orthographic awareness, and morphological mm -hmm. awareness may contribute differently uh, to spelling depending on the type of orthography. And finally, teaching spelling improves fluency, comprehension, and writing. And again, as I started out, considering the important <coughs> role spelling plays that we need more uh, research. So that's about it. I know I went fast, but uh, we're, all, we're all ready for lunch. And <laughs> Thank you for uh, staying because you know this is nothing to do with brain. Okay, Ken? Yes. I, I love your the second language data spelling. You've been presenting for a while. Yeah. Could you have you thought about making a what, whether that has implications for how you, we should teach depending on the background, or, or is there just sort of a general oh, way of teaching? Well, uh, yes and no. Uh, uh, the question was uh, should we teach English spelling? Uh, should we take into consideration the first language orthography yeah. while teaching uh, uh, English spelling? Yes, definitely um, we should. Uh, in addition to that, the classroom teachers must also be aware, must be knowledgeable in the nature of first orthography. Because you know we have a lot of students who come from China, and so when a Chinese child spells uh, a word as word, you know, uh, naturally, they need the phonetic, uh, phonological principles, but the classroom teacher should also understand that in Chinese it is more at the morpheme level. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think the uh, you know I think it, they have to teach the explicit, systematic instruction. In addition to that, the teacher should also be aware of the nature of L1 orthography. because they speak it. But the children do not speak Amhari today. So there is no effect of the vowel, the, of the sounds that they do not, they don't exist in Amhari on their spelling in Hebrew. I think it also matters how literate the children are in the yeah. first language. Oh, we were talking yeah. yesterday about yeah, character speaking. Yeah. So if you're, you know, oral speaker of Chinese, but you, you're not literate in Chinese, then I'm sure it becomes very different. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, thank you. Enjoy.